month, we're going to see like a bunch of funny yeah. gifs and there's going to be a Mario one. Vines. Is, that, is, is Vines still a thing or did they close that down? No, they closed that down. Though you can still watch them. Okay. If you want to go back and watch your favorite Vines, I think okay. you still can. Well, you know, things like that. You know, we're going <laughs> to touch bar demos. It's, it's pretty much going to be that's, the next month. That's all so. it's going to be. All right. Oh, I guess we are live. Uh, hello. This is Close to the Metal. This is our weekly show about computing where we go in depth with different products. And today we are going to be doing the live review of the Apple MacBook Pro, including the aforementioned touch bar. So as we're doing this, uh, we got a whole system that we're going to go through and kind of piece by piece give you the review of what it is. Uh, what uh, this is Matt Smith right here, our computing editor, and uh, Matt's going to give you his thoughts on it. Uh, I will ask some questions and I'll take your questions too. So if you're watching live on YouTube, go ahead and drop in there. Let us know your thoughts on this, uh, the new product. Let us know what your questions are, what your complaints are, what you like, all of that stuff. We'll get to it as we go through. So um, this is the Apple MacBook Pro 13. Correct. Yep. The 13. With touch bar. With touch bar. Which is an important distinction to make now because you have the reg the baseline model without touch bar, which actually is different in ways beyond this the touch bar. Um, but yeah, this is the base touch bar model. So this is the eighteen hundred dollar one. Eighteen hundred dollars. Yeah. For what we're looking at right yeah. here. So this is the cheapest one you can get with a touch bar. Okay. And just before we get going, um, you know, I know you are a little bit uh, hesitant on this computer as far as the overall. We'll, we'll get yeah. to more of the review yeah. at the end. <laughs> but okay, I won't spoil it there. We'll, we'll get to that. Uh, like I said, just drop your questions in there. So why don't we start off with the design itself of what they're going for here? Yeah, yeah. We can start off on a, a high point. Okay, I think, we'll start off is on, definitely <laughs> before it goes rapidly the down. The overall design of the system, um, which, you know, Apple has always just had its way of making really elegant nice feeling premium products it's true right of macbook it's true of the iphone and the ipads it, it's a very subtle sort of art that they have going mm -hmm. in the sense that with a lot of their products uh including this macbook there's nothing about it that you can look at the design and say wow like that is innovative mm -hmm. right like some companies like um like Dell, for example, they like the tout and have for a while that they have carbon fiber elements in the chassis of the Dell XPS line. Sure. Great. You know, um, and that does have its benefits, but I wouldn't say that an XPS 13 feels more premium than this in sure. any way. This is just nicely constructed. There's not any flex in any yeah. panels. You don't see seams unless you flip it, flip it over where, of course... You can unscrew the bottom. Um, and, I mean, even the speakers, you know, like this is basically where your actual sound's coming out of. Otherwise, you just have a really minimal little uh, speaker on each side. I mean, they do a good job of making things look nice, like yeah. you said. You feel like you've got some a high-end product just by looking at it. Yeah, it feels um, well-balanced. Yeah. Um, you know, even, you know, something like the screen is, is something that's... Oftentimes a weak point, if you're going to look at mm -hmm. design, it can feel cheap or flex or what have you. Yeah. Um, and here, like, there's not really much flex at all. You'd really have to force it to get anything out of it. And, and also little elements like how you can just open it with one finger, which is something that is still not uh, the case on a lot of Windows. Mm -hmm. Ultrabooks, they just decide not to do that. You know, it's a little bit more trouble to get it balanced that way or whatever. So, yeah. Um, you know, just little touches like that. Um, and this is space gray, new color, which I think that people will appreciate because, I mean, the silver of the previous pros is nice. Um, yeah. But it's, you know, we've had that for a long time. That's been the only option for a long time. And, uh, you know, people like to express themselves a little bit. Sure. With yeah, the color wild and crazy with space gray. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a little disappointing look at, maybe look at that how they had space gray as the first one, I think. <laughs> Although I will say... It is probably the most professional color choice they yeah. could pick. So that kind of makes sense. And I I do think we'll probably see the other colors come. Do you think so? Yeah. In this? I, I mean, I can't think of any reason why they wouldn't. And they actually, I'm pretty sure like when the MacBook Pro 12-inch uh, came out, that that was like silver and gold. Yeah. And now you can get it rose gold and space gray. So... I think uh, we'll see. We'll see some gold we'll coming see. out in these. Yeah, we'll probably see some other kind of color. 
Okay, so overall design looks good, feels good as far as that, as far as aesthetically, it's aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, um, um, yeah, and it, it is, you know, a fairly small system, something that uh, is noticeable if you compare it to the old MacBook Pro 13 is even though these are both 13-inch systems, mm -hmm. uh, they've, they've trimmed down the bezels. So this one is smaller footprint-wise than the 13-inch Pro okay. was before. So it's like basically maybe like a half inch on each side, you know, or it's not a, it's not a giant gap, yeah. but you definitely notice it like in hand, in a bag, this feels right. Nice you know, rounded it's just, edges. It's just, yeah. It's just a little bit easier to slip into a bag. Um, and that's, that's good because, um, you know, again, Dell XPS 13 is one that kind of led the charge there. Um, with small bezels and mm -hmm. small design. And the XPS 13 is still a little bit smaller footprint than this, but only barely. Uh, it's actually about the same width and just slightly smaller on the depth. Okay. So, yeah, uh, what about as far as the thinness of this? I mean, the thinness it's... is good, but not impressive. Okay. Um, that's a point that I think, you know, if maybe you're not familiar with laptops recently, um, you might have the... The, the image that of Windows laptops being very bulky, uh, and that's actually not the case anymore. Uh, there are multiple Windows laptops that are a fair bit thinner and lighter than this. Um, we're talking, this is three pounds, a little over three pounds, mm -hmm. and there are Windows laptops that are between like 2.3 and 2.8 pounds. That includes things like the Dell XPS 13, Acer that's, Swift 7, and that's pretty significant. HP Spectre. Yeah, I mean, like, you, you, at that point, some people are going to be like, I don't really care. Yeah. That's understandable. But it is a noticeable difference in hand. And it does help a little bit if you're trying to fit this into a small bag that you would take with you mm -hmm. all the time. Um, and also on thickness, you know, the thinnest window systems are getting down to around 0.4 inches. This is po about 0.6 inches. Uh, just a little bit sliver less than that. So, again, you know, that's a, a difference you will notice. You might not actually care about that difference. Mm -hmm. Depends on you, but it's a difference, you know, that it you wouldn't there. notice. It is Yeah, um, it's not the thinnest anymore. It's not the no. You know, Mac's not making the the thinnest one. No, I I think, you know, maybe that that's the MacBook's job. You know, to yeah. be the thinnest. Um, although it's not the thinnest, but uh, <laughs> it was when it came out. Um, Once upon a time, to be fair, uh, sure. So. Okay. Well, so so there's some in info about the design. Like I said, if you have any questions, drop those in there. Let's get to the keyboard. And, of course, the big thing about this one, which is the touch bar. Um, now, I know you have some specific thoughts on this keyboard. I will say it does feel a lot different. It's very shallow. Yeah. As far as... Uh, like as far as tactile, so you're touching it. Yeah, the keyboard. Okay. Um, so last year, Apple came out with a MacBook, mm -hmm. 12 inch, and like I said, it, at the time it was the thinnest system. And to accomplish that, Apple decided to go with this butterfly switch design, which is a new switch design they did in house for keyboards. And the the main points with that is that it allows for um, very thin profile. And also, backlit keyboard. Okay. Um, which, that's the main advantage of it. Um, some thin Windows laptops actually don't have the backlit keyboard. They decide to get rid of that to have more key travel. Now, there are some Windows manufacturers that have managed decent key travel and backlighting, but not all, all have. And Apple basically is, there's this sacrificing some key travel to both get that backlight in to be mm -hmm. able to stuff more things in below the system like a battery processor right. all the other good stuff at the same time while stripping it out of some other things though which we'll get to here in a bit yeah too. um now the problem though is that key travel is very important and it's something that you yeah it's very hard to sort of tech your way out of mm -hmm. like you you press down on a thing and it feels like it moves and that provides some satisfying tactile action. Right. Especially um, if you're not looking at it. I mean, I'm so used to that. Yeah. Just typing. I never look at my keyboard. I, I, that feel is important to me. Yeah. Basically when a person presses a button, you want to know that you press the button. Yeah. And, um, you know, these keys are not all that great at that, honestly. Mm -hmm. Um, the main problem I have with them is that they feel, they can feel very harsh. In okay. the way they bottom out, uh, it's kind of like, um, almost like you're typing 
on something that's just sort of been put on a block of wood or something. It's it just it can be uncomfortable after typing for a long period of time for me. Um, Is it something that you're just so used to that it would just take time then you get used to this and this will be the way things go? I, mean, I think you, think you I think will start getting. It's possible to get used to this. Yeah. Um, but. I think also that it's not, it's it's just clearly not as good mm -hmm. as having a keyboard with more travel. And personally, I wouldn't buy a laptop with this kind of keyboard. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just not some. You know, I'm of course a writer and editor. Right. You know, so for me, uh, keyboard quality is extremely important. It's one of the most important things on a laptop, and um, I, I wouldn't want to live with this one long term, I don't think, as like my only system. Um, so, you know, that's and that's going to be a, a, a problematic point for a lot of people. I mean, it has been. I've seen other people talking about it and being, you know, very wary of it because the MacBook Pro always had like pretty good keyboards. Yeah. Uh, and the entire like island style, big, broad key thing was kind of something that Apple started in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, like keyboards look the way they do today largely because of apple although some people might point out that i think it was sony that did it first but apple gets it was credit. largely because of apple yeah. they, they picked it up and you know um yeah so that's that's going to be something that's going to be a problem for for certain users definitely. okay and i'm curious out there if you're watching you know what you think about that as far as the keyboard and that and that feel to it yeah uh skip says and i think maybe we'll get to some of this here in a minute i don't care as much for thinness as i do for power and as much ram as i can get at least 32 gigs which i know this you cannot right you cannot you yeah cannot. We'll, we'll get we'll in the get performance in a little bit but yeah, yeah you, you can't get the 32 gigs on it um, um now and, and something else about the keyboard uh, just sort of going to the touchpad too, which is mm -hmm. much larger. Yeah, and that's great. The touchpad is the touchpad is huge on this laptop. Yeah. Now again, this isn't something that we only are seeing on Apple laptops. Several Windows laptops have recently come out with big touchpads, but none of them are quite this big. Mostly in the actual depth of it between the front of the laptop and the keyboard. Um, some of them are about as wide. Okay. Uh, but, you know, something that I, I liked last year about the MacBook Pro, I really liked, was Force Touch, mm -hmm. which they have this capacity to make it feel like you are clicking on the touchpad. Yeah. Uh, even though it's actually not moving. Yeah. You know, and they do the same vibration. thing with the iPhone. Yeah. Um, it, it, you know, it would have been really great to see some sort of incorporation of that in the keyboard. Why but, do you think they didn't? Uh. It's, I mean, I, I don't think the engineering's there. Because what yeah. I'm thinking is that to do that, you would probably need, like, multiple, ha like, haptic feedback systems through the keyboard. Yeah. It's a big surface to cover. Um, so I can kind of understand why that wasn't there. But, you know, if Apple is going to, like, commit to this kind of keyboard, then that's going to, I think, have to be the next move for them. Yeah, to yeah. add that. Yeah, to, to add that and see if they can sort of compensate for the actual key travel the physical key travel with some sort of haptic feedback system. Okay. Maybe. I'd, I wouldn't count it out as possible. But So the touchpad, um, just for this, just kind of that. So it's a definitely big, a big, big touchpad. I don't know if you can see this. If you're yeah, and live. if you're worried about uh, uh, like palm rejection. Yeah. Because some people. Because that's, I would worry about yeah, that. Yeah. I, I didn't have any problem with it. Okay. Uh, There's I, enough room on the sides that you can. Yeah. I usually don't have a big problem with palm rejection on laptops. Um, uh, modern Windows laptops seem quite good with it. Uh, this one, literally the entire time I've used it, I've not once gotten a improper like input from the touchpad because my palm was on it. So, okay, you know, I've heard other people say they did it, they did it once or twice or something like that. But personally, I never saw it, so I w it's not something I would really worry about too much. Okay, um, let's go on to uh, since we're looking at this right now. You want to hit the yeah the touchpad? Let's go ahead and or, we'll, uh, touch bar. Excuse me. So we'll start, you know, with since we're at the login screen here. Yeah, we'll start with Touch ID, which is probably the best part of the Touch Bar. And you can um, get this MacBook Pro without that, correct? Without the Touch Bar, right? Yeah. Uh, so, I just logged in just with my uh, fingerprint, and uh, it works just like on the iPhone. Mm -hmm. It's as quick as on the iPhone, and I really love this feature because you know computer security is really important, and anything that can make security easier for the user um, and more secure at the same time. Yeah, yeah. You know, like passwords aren't 
awesome because you have to remember them. We all know that's a problem. Um, and, you know, uh, so a fingerprint reader that works really quickly and easily is um, like a great upgrade, right? Yeah. Um, and also you can even pay online with it using Apple Pay because it's Apple Pay supported. So you can go to a website and it'll be like, hey, you want to buy this? Touch your fingerprint, you mm-hmm. know, down. Uh, and you pay that way, or you can do that on the Mac App Store. Or whatever. I don't think I want that um, power myself. <laughs> oh yeah, I, know. I want it's, more control. It's than way that. too it's, easy. It's yeah, like something's got to block me from it's it. It's like even past one click by. Yeah. It's just like oh, boop, dude. Uh, yeah, purchase. I can't imagine having uh, a few drinks and just sitting there like, yep, yep, yep. Uh, but anyway, um, so so the touchpad, and I just used it right there. If you're watching live, I just used it to really quickly to darken the screen. It's very, it is very easy to use. It yeah. is. It is pretty slick. Now, how does it work as far as changing it out to different um, options? Because it's it's customizable, right, to pretty much anything. I know there was a video. Well, I don't. It's not particularly customizable in not. terms of like end user customization. So like, you have to use developers preset. can do lots of different stuff okay. with it. Um, but that's the, actually a question that just came up: Is the, the touch bar at the at the mercy of devs, or do all apps have touch bar functions? Uh, yeah, it's at the mercy of devs. Although I will say, you know, Apple. So Apple's done a good job of of putting things in th- that work with the Touch Bar. Like you get it, you open the system, you start using it, and you find that pretty much all those first party apps are working in some way with the Touch Bar, mm-hmm. and that's great. Um, for example, I'll bring up Safari here, and uh, go to uh, Digital Trends. And then I'll open another tab. Maybe just go to the New York Times. And um, down here on the touch bar, we have the tabs, actually, with little tab previews. I'm not sure if you can see that on there. Um, I don't know if that'll come up on the camera or not. Yeah, it's too it's, small. It's pretty hard which, to see. But, yeah, well, it's essentially but, um, you can physically pick out your yeah, tabs. Yeah, and this I mean, is, all right. That's it's not it's so, much, so hard to click on it. On it's the not screen, hard to but. click on it. it. It is nice that you get a preview. Yeah, I mean that's good, and you get things with like photo apps. You can, you know, move back and through them, see little previews. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, with like video editing apps and stuff, a lot of those. Um, yeah, hypers. show timelines. Uh, hypers in the chat saying, uh, "I'm searching for a laptop that I can edit videos and re- and photos, write codes with it." Um, using Adobe After Effects, Premiere, and Photoshop. So there are shortcuts yeah. for all of those. I don't think Adobe has There's support Adobe for not- this yet. I, I know, although Microsoft has announced Office support, that's not. there's nothing going on with that special right yeah. now. So that's coming. Um, you would assume Adobe would be coming so out that, with something So that's like this. where you're at the mercy of d- developers. Like yeah. All the first-party stuff is there, but yeah, if you want to use it third-party, um, then yeah, you they are... They have to develop something. Yeah, they have to, to add it. And... The the problem though is that a lot of the stuff that's been put in there first party, uh, it definitely feels like a solution searching for a problem. Yeah, and and honestly, I I just don't really I haven't really found much of a use for Touch Bar. I haven't been using it much at all. Um, you know, I, I go out of my way to use it <laughs> just to try just to try you to have find to, it. like you know it's like you're testing it, but. Like, in my natural use of the system, I haven't seen much reason to use it. Um, a lot of the problem is that the screen is just too small. So, with, like, the Safari tab mm-hmm. example, I think that's a nice idea. Like, it's nice to be able to see, like, previews of your different tabs. You know, some browsers kind of incorporate things like that, um, where you, like, hover your cursor over it and it'll bring up a, a, right. a browser tab preview. That's great. Um but the screen's too small. Like, if you get more than a couple of tabs open, then everything is basically just a white blob Jumbled with mess. some squibbles on it, you know. And and it's like I don't know what this is. Yeah. You know, you can't tell. It's the same thing with photos when you're trying to go through a timeline or something. Uh, you know, it's like okay, like I can't really, unless it's like a yeah. really clear, obvious picture. It's like I, I can't really tell what that is. I'm curious, uh, anybody so, watching too, if you can think of a of, of something that you're going to be using this Touch Bar for, or you have something that you would like to use it for, other than clearly, I mean, photo editing and video editing seems to be the the no brainer. Although functionality yeah, for that, may, support for that, maybe I'm not entirely sold on that either there. because I don't think that the screen provides a very precise level of input. Yeah, I've noticed that when scrolling through. Well, I've done a few things like rotating photos, but also when scrolling through videos or timelines, mm-hmm. 
you know, it seems difficult to get to that exact spot that you want to be in because there's no haptic feedback, you know. Yeah. There's it's you can't really see what you're you're going through actually on the touch bar. So you kind of look at the screen uh, while also going back and forth, and you know, I mean, that's the kind of thing you would probably want like a mouse with a scroll wheel. Yeah. To do. <laughs> you mean? Yeah, that brand uh, new tech mouse with scroll wheel. So yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm I so you know. This this definitely gives more power to the MacBook Pro 13 without Touch Bar. Yeah. Because I would say you know, if like it you don't really need the Touch Bar. So that fifteen hundred dollar model definitely looks more attractive in that light. Yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. There's the Touch Bar. Um, you know, the big, the big flashy addition that uh, Mac added to this. If you have any comments or questions, please drop those in there. So let's go through the rest of the rest of the system here. Talk about the speakers. I know you brought them up earlier. Speakers are uh, great. Speakers are great. Yeah, they're really okay. good. Uh, maybe the best I've heard in a 13 inch laptop. Wow. Um, there's this, they actually produce a little bit of bass. Mm -hmm. You can kind of feel the thump at maximum volume in the keyboard, All right. which is which is funny. Um, <laughs> you know, and just thirteen inch like laptops tend to have really bad speakers. Yeah, and we've seen some newer systems that are okay, but you know, like you, they're generally not something you'd want to listen to music on. And this is you know acceptable. Like you would probably you know use this instead of like a high quality you know Bluetooth speaker. You, know, you would you, use you, this you instead would, of that. You would probably be okay with what you're getting here. Okay. Um, and you can, you know, leave it on, you know, in your living room or office, mm -hmm. you know, with some music going and fill your office with, you know, decent uh, quality music. Of a, yeah, so, you're right. Off a 13-inch laptop, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. So. And, and it's not something you normally get. And for a lot of people, I think they'll just stick with the speakers that are here mm -hmm. and not really bother with, like, any kind of external – Mm -hmm. speaker setup they'll probably feel it's fine okay all right so there the display you said was is good the display is 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 very good very good yeah okay. and actually it's kind of funny because this is this is pretty much like this is the macbook pro 13 with the touch bar right because mm -hmm. the last model was the macbook pro with retina display like that yeah. was the big thing like the retina display uh but actually you know like i said i don't really like the touch bar so much but the display Display as far as I'm concerned, this is still the MacBook Pro 13 with Retina Display because the display is the most uh, color accurate one we've seen in any laptop. Uh, it's got really good contrast ratio, 1200 to 1 in our testing, which is um, most laptops will get the high hundreds, so like around 700 to okay. 1 contrast ratio to 900 to 1. All right, that's definitely impressive. So, you know, that's that's a, a nice difference. It's extremely bright, uh, like 540 lux maximum is what we recorded, which most laptops would do 300 to 350. Okay. Um, what else was there? The color gamut, 100% sRGB, 91% Adobe RGB. Most laptops would do 96 to 99% of sRGB and around 70 to 75% of Adobe RGB. Okay. So uh, you got a nice wide color gamut, so you can do some color critical work on it. Um and, and this is all out of the box. Like, you don't have to – like, you don't really have to calibrate this display. This is something I think that Apple has sort of been using as one of their key advantages is that other companies will have great display panels, but they re maybe require a little tweaking mm -hmm. to get the most out of them. Uh, but Apple will just, you know, send you the laptop, um, and it has a um, – a great display out of the box. Yeah. So and you don't have to, to do anything to it. Open it up and just um, use it. Yeah. Um, um, so really, can't, I mean, the only way you'll get a better display in a laptop is if you go with OLED. Okay. But even there, um, you're going to get much higher contrast, uh, but it's probably not going to be as color accurate. Unless okay. Unless you calibrate it yourself. A um, couple of questions coming from the chat. Just to go back a little bit, we're going to get into performance and portability and uh, a couple of other things with it as we go through this. Uh, try to answer these. Uh, why aren't the speakers under the meshy part? Um, I believe they're underneath, right? Yeah, so I, I know I fixed it, like, tore down the system and found mm -hmm. that for the most part, the meshy part is not actually where the sound comes out, <laughs> which is, you know, kind of funny, but also ultimately doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess the only reason that might matter is that you can kind of muffle the sound if you place this on your lap a certain way. It's like sure. digging into your legs or something. Yeah. Um, but that's a pretty common laptop thing. So right. I wouldn't get too big. At that point, shape. just put in some headphones. Yeah. I mean, 
You'll, you'll be okay. Okay, um, let's see. Any other questions in here? Oh, yeah, uh, Skip just said a comment really quick about the touch bar. It seems like I would have to rethink my whole workflow just to incorporate the touch bar. And that's kind of, I think, what, what, uh, what Matt was yeah, saying. Yeah, it, it kind of feels that way right now. Yeah. So, All right, well, let's jump down to uh, performance. Let's talk about that because we did bring up that it is capped for how much RAM you can get, correct, at 16 gigs? Yeah, that. So that, we'll just start there okay. um, because a lot of people have been asking about RAM. Yes, uh, 16 gigs is the most you can get. They say the reason why you can't get 32 gigs is because it would require different RAM control. Uh, uh, what was it? I don't think it was a different RAM controller, but but basically um, it would be less power efficient configuration. And they okay. thought that it would hurt the battery life too much, so they decided not to do it. Um, which, you know. You can agree or disagree with that, but it is what it is. Uh, the fact of the matter is you can't get that much RAM on it, so you can't get more than 16 gigs. So if you want that, then maybe it's don't buy this. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that's just, that's just the, the long and short of that. It's actually a really easy answer. I love those sort of things. It's like I want, I want a whole bunch of RAM on my laptop. And it's like, well, don't get this because you can't. It, <laughs> just, that, doesn't, not gonna it just doesn't do that. Um, so, yeah, it's unfortunate, but, you know, that's not going to change. That yeah. is what it is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it'll probably change sometime down the line when uh, they update it with new hardware and can get a different chipset in and blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, for now, it is what it is. Uh, the processor, uh, Core i5-6267U is the base level processor in this. And there's actually a lot to unpack with the processor. Yeah. Because there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um so first thing is this is the sixth generation Intel Core processor as opposed to the newer seventh generation. Okay, so that's you know caused some complaints. Right. Like why would you why not go with the top of the line the the newer model? The reason is that uh, in that that Apple likes to go with these twenty eight watt thermal design power processors, and most Intel Core mobile processors are designed for fifteen watt thermal design power. Now, what that basically means is that the processors in the MacBook Pros, the dual-core processors, uh, consume more power at load. They're designed to be able to do that. They consume more power. They get more performance as a result. You know, that's yeah. just the physics of processors. You put in some more power, uh -huh. and you tend to get out more performance if you're looking at the same architecture, which basically you are. Um, so, um, in the past... This has meant the MacBook Pro 13 was like the fastest dual core laptop. You know, like the 2015 model we looked at, yeah, it was, was the fastest dual core laptop. You didn't really see anything that was quicker. But this time around, the fact they are still using the older architecture kind of cuts against it. So, um, what that Which again means, seems like an odd choice. It does. Well, you uh, know, again, it's it's the, these. This, so this 28 watt sort of design is not available in the seventh generation yet, which is why. They didn't go with the seventh generation. Um, but it does have some consequences for performance. Um, basically, this laptop is very quick. Um, in Geek Be Geekbench 3, it did receive the quickest single core score that we had uh, ever seen from a laptop. But it was a little bit behind in the uh, multi-core scores. Okay. So... Let me just bring up the spreadsheet here, and okay. I can tell you the exact numbers. While we're taking a look at that, just uh, a couple of questions. We're going to get to skip your comment there. Um, Manos says, for, for a photographer, is it better than the MacBook Pro 2015? Um, know, kinda... Yeah, I mean, it is, it is quicker. It is quicker. Okay. But you're also lacking some of those ports, which we're going to get into here in a minute, too. So that may be yeah. part, of, part of an issue for you. Um, so, okay. So MacBook Pro 13 with touch bar. Single core Geekbench 3 score, 3,763. Okay. Now, a Lenovo Yoga 910 with a Core i7-7500U processor, it got 3,687. So, so this actually scored better. It's Yeah, this scored a, a little less than 100 more. So not a big difference. Uh, now, multi-core, okay? The MacBook Pro 13 with the touch bar got 7,638 in Geekbench 3. Lenovo Yoga 910 got 7,973. So that's the, about 300 points more in the multi-core score. Um, overall, yeah, is that going to translate to a lot? They're of pretty much that, even. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that um, you're going to notice. Yeah, and in everyday use, this system does feel very quick. 
you would expect it to considering the processor. It's just kind of like, uh, it, it's, it's a very quick system. It's just sort of maybe is a relative backstep. If, mm -hmm. I mean, it feels like a relative backstep because for one, it's no longer actually quicker than that Core i7 system where it yeah. used to be. Uh, and also because it's much more expensive than it was before. Yeah, I was going to say that the so, price level, you kind of want the So fastest. you do think about that in value. It's like this, the level of performance on offer here is f what you would expect from the price. It's what it's just what you would expect maybe, you know, like okay. if a laptop so, didn't perform like this, it would be very disappointing. Um, but, you know, it is very quick. So um, the only way you would actually get something quicker um, substantially quicker would be if you went with something like a Razer Blade, uh, which has a quad core processor stuffed into like a fourteen inch chassis. Okay, but but that's that's about it. Yeah, and that's, that's I, about the only way you would get quicker. So okay, uh, anything else on the performance that you want to bring up, or if there's any other questions out there too? Uh, Mano uh, says it's faster, but is it worth a thousand dollars? Yeah, the hard drive money? is extremely quick. Yeah. Apple always talks about the hard drives, and uh, yeah, it seems to be. Um, Pretty much the quickest you'll find a 13-inch laptop. Not hugely so, but like you know, there. But there's definitely a, a decent gap between it and the quickest Windows alternatives. So if you want hard drive performance, that's great. Okay. Uh, gaming, no. Yeah, still no. Uh, we tested Civilization VI. For some reason, it wouldn't go above 1440 by 900 um, resolution. Even at that resolution, at minimum detail, it was struggling to hit over 30 frames per second. And there were a lot of graphical glitches. So that just seems like a market that Mac is just not interested in. Not really. In. Yeah. Not really. I mean, the graphics component is there for which this has Intel H uh, Iris Graphics 550, uh, but that's really there for like uh, photo editing, video editing, yeah. a little bit of boost to that. There are certain apps that can harness that power. Um, but if you're buying a Mac, yeah. gaming probably is most likely not your primary or even secondary no, focus at all. It would be all, nice, so. though, that if, like, Civilization Six is kind of a baseline, our new baseline, yeah. like, game, because that series is massively po popular. Like, Civilization Five still top ten on Steam. And right yeah. now, Civilization Five and Civilization Six are both on the top ten on Steam. And, like, people love that game. It's a game they turn to, you know, at the end of the day, they're just like, mm-hmm. Play a few times yeah, a chop it in, yeah. And and you can't really do that with a MacBook Pro. And that's unfortunate. Now we didn't test it if you like go and boot camp it. We haven't got to that right. yet. But, but I that's mean, going through a lot of steps if you right, really want to get it. You have game, to buy a then, copy of Windows, blah blah blah. At that so. point, yeah, then then why are you even buying this in the first place, I would think. Um Morris is asking not even older games like Half Life. Oh I I guess, yeah, you can play Half Life, but yeah. you know. But that's, I mean... 2D uh, games? You sure. want to play a 2D game? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Okay. I mean, you can handle that, but, you know. Okay. Um, so definitely not gaming on this thing, but the, there we go. Some some details about the performance. Let's talk about uh, some of the ports here, which you're really limited on your ports on this computer. Um, yeah. You have uh, four USB Type-C slash, slash Thunderbolt 3. And that's it. Yep, that's all you There's get. no uh, no older USB ports. There's no SD slot, which that's something that I think, you know, has been brought up before, especially for photographers and video editors who might be more prone to buy a you know buy this kind of laptop. SD cards standard, you know, yeah. I mean that's that's what you use. Yeah, um, jumping back and forth. So now you have to start carrying around some more. Yeah, adapters. you're going to need a lot of adapters if you use a lot of peripherals. You know, I, you know, this is the kind of thing that like some people won't really care because. <laughs> This is something that doesn't impact me a whole lot personally. Yeah. Um, because I don't use a lot of extra things with my laptop. Um, I have a mouse that's wireless. You know, I don't usually use an external keyboard. I use my desktop at home, so I'm not plugging into a monitor. Mm -hmm. um, but then some people use their laptop as, like, their main system, and then they just kind of dock at the stuff. Yeah. Or charging devices, even, you know. Or charging devices. Yeah, you can't charge this iPhone 7 off of the uh, MacBook Pro out of the box. Because the port here, this this comes, the iPhone 7 comes with a Thunderbolt to USB adapter that is old USB. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fit in this thing, so you can't plug it in. Um, 
on the other hand, though, if you do use peripherals, this is going to be an annoyance for you uh, for at least yeah. a few years until the USB Type C gets more popular. And that's why. Why do you think they didn't go with <sighs> at least one older USB so that you'd have one one thing in there? Well, you know, when asked about why they don't do SD card support, yeah. Um, I don't remember which Apple exec it was that said this, but an Apple exec said they didn't like SD cards because, you know, they hang out from the system and, you know, it's kind of annoying and they, you know, they just dangle out. And they it's, don't really hang out from the system, though. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. <laughs> if you get one of the SD card slots where it goes yeah. in. Uh, but, you know, that's the kind of answer that Apple gives you. Right. And so the answer is, well, because now you have four ports and they're all the same and they all look the same and they're very small and you can plug them in either direction and those are the things apple values you know like yeah uniformity so, across the across the board yeah they don't like like weird sd card por ports that take up space on the side of the system and look ugly um so that's not there so you don't get one yeah you know <laughs> and that's but you know that's and that's that is what it is. Again, like yeah. this is a, a again a very simple question. If you want to plug in your SD card and you don't want to carry dongles, then this isn't the system for you. Yeah, but you're you gotta be okay need... with dongles. Yeah, dongles are gonna um, be the key. Uh, that and that does something that that is bad about that. In my opinion, it's probably the worst thing about that is that the dongles are pricey. If you start to get a lot of them, uh, if you want to dock this system as like a desktop, you're going to have to get like a dedicated dock, which can run you like a hundred to $200. So you're already adding that on top of an $800 system. And you're like, Oh, you know, right. bleeding me dry here. Um, on the upside, uh, I did test this with some, uh, Dell and Huawei USB type C, Huawei. uh, adapters that are in the office. We use them for most of our adapter needs and they worked without any setup. Okay. So it's just plug plugs right in. Yeah, Works so, fine. Okay. hey, that's good. If you do have a, an adapter issue, it looks like you can probably plug in whatever USB Type-C adapter, and you'll probably be all right. So that's good. Okay. Um, if anybody has any other questions, too, about, about these, please drop those in there. I see a couple of questions that we did address earlier in the show uh, that you might want to pop back and get. We're um, talking about the Retina display versus the previous model, um, that the display is great on this It is one. better than the previous model, too. Better than the previous model. Yeah. Um, yeah, and any other questions in there that you want to get in, go ahead and drop those in. Uh, keyboard, we did cover that uh, actually at the very beginning of this episode. So you can always go back if you're listening on, uh, if you're watching on YouTube. It's at the very beginning. So as soon as this thing's done, you can go back and rewatch that. And uh, we, we go pretty in depth on the keyboard. Um, and if you have any other final questions, please get those in there. So uh, is that it for the, for the ports? I guess there's not much more to say. I mean, it's nope, three USB nope. Type C. And if that's not what you want, <laughs> that's <laughs> those are the ports. That's what Max so. is giving you. Uh, so, what is it overall? Let's let's kind of wrap this up and talk about this computer overall. Is this something you would buy? What are your thoughts on it? Um, what's your what's your conclusion on this? Uh, personally, it's not something I would buy. Okay. Um, the pro and problems, you're a Mac person. I mean, you, uh, no, well, well, no, no. For some reason, okay. you decided I was because I have because an iPhone, you wore a Mac shirt which... and you had an iPhone, <laughs> and now I've just branded yes, that yes. as that. That is uh, false. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll take the blame for that. I maintain no particular allegiance. Uh, True. Uh, except uh, it's I don't really use Linux, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, you know, I use Windows systems. I use Mac systems. Yeah. I go back and forth a lot because I have to write about both of them. True. Um, but yeah, so I wouldn't I wouldn't really buy this. Yeah. For several reasons, it's very expensive, and it's not clear why. Um, the keyboard is not great. It's actually fairly it's below average the keyboard is definitely below average um you know the performance is fine but in some areas it's you know like i i don't like the way they handle gaming mm -hmm. um and um we didn't really talk much about portability but the portability is not it's no longer better than its windows competitors okay. it seems to be slightly worse um, than the best Windows Ultrabooks. Um, and those are the things that I want from a laptop, so I wouldn't buy this one. Yeah. Um, you know, the one thing I really like about this more than anything else is the display, which is amazing. Uh, the Retina display is awesome. It's probably, you know, it's definitely a contender for best overall. 
laptop display we've seen, although it sort of depends on how much you care about contrast because OLED definitely has a beat there. Uh, but, you know, that's not quite enough to get me over, you know, to, to buy this system as opposed to, say, a Dell XPS 13 or an H HP Spectre X360. Yeah. Um, you know, I would definitely go with those over this. Okay. All right. Um, let me see here. A couple of last questions. I'm seeing, uh, asking if the Thunderbolt 3 ports are slower on the 13 versus the 15. Uh, on the 13 with Pro, uh, with Touch Bar, I don't know if they're slower. It's mm -hmm. not part of our test uh, suite. Um, I know what you're probably thinking about, which is that some folks were testing the ports on the MacBook Pro 13 without the Touch Bar. Mm hmm and they found that they appear to be slower. I've also seen some complaints that the MacBook Pro 13 with the touch bar can't handle maximum performance on all of its ports at the oh, same really? time, which is a pretty edge case, but if you're doing like some video streaming with things plugged in, mm -hmm. uh, like external devices plugged in, then it could be an issue for you, but that's just, it's too, you know, specific of a case for us to be part of our test suite so okay i can't say that for definitively okay that's being asked if you had twenty five hundred dollars would you buy the 2015 model or or this new one if i had twenty five hundred dollars i'd probably buy a dell xps 15 <laughs> so skip it all together yeah yeah i mean um or, or a surface book mm -hmm. uh, with performance base you can get one of those for that much money yeah so. So that's a, that's the route you would go. All right. Well, if you have any final questions, go ahead and drop those in there. And I did see some some people asking about some things we did cover at the beginning of the show. So definitely go back and watch this. And uh, and if you have any other questions, you can drop those into the chat too. Um, Matt, any final comments or on this one? Uh, I think we've pretty much covered everything. I think we've, yeah, but hit. um, yeah. I mean, that is the MacBook Pro 13 with Touch Bar mm -hmm. and. The full review is going to be coming out uh, tomorrow. Okay. Uh, I'm still working on writing up the copy of it, um, but all the testing was finished for this little spot, so we, we've got all that information in. Um, yeah, it's just it does feel a little to me. It's a little disappointing. Um, you know, I really liked the old MacBook Pro 13 in its golden years of like 2014, 2015, when it was like the fastest and the yeah. keyboard was still like noticeably better than a lot of windows alternatives. And, you know, it had a lot of ports too. And like the touchpad or the force touchpad when it first came out, that was awesome. And this, you know, just in general day-to-day -day use, this doesn't feel as nice. In fact, if you are a Mac user and you're skeptical about this, I would say feel free to be skeptical. Uh, you can get the old one still and it's, actually got some nice traits that you might be interested in so and it'll be less expensive so don't be afraid <laughs> to get the old model look for those refurbished deals or whatever um i bet you'll get some pretty nice deals over the black friday and holiday shopping season so all right watch out for that all right well there we go so the full review coming out tomorrow uh, on the site, yeah. digitaltrends.com, where you can see reviews of everything and get answers to all of these questions. We can also leave them in the comments here if you're listening via podcast. We also have this as an audio version. So subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. That'd be great. Just hit the subscribe button, and uh, that helps out a lot. And, uh, yeah, if you have any other questions or any comments, you can always email podcast at digitaltrends.com and let us know what those are. If you agree, disagree, whatever, we'll get back to you with those. And uh, I think that's about it for this week. So we'll be back next week week next Tuesday, live at 10 a.m. Pacific time, as we are uh, every week right here at digitaltrends.com. So we'll see you uh, next week for another episode.